Hello everyone, welcome to a new video today. Today we're going to be looking at Joe Starstruck, the JoJo dating simulator. So, I don't I don't really feel like I need to say much else. If you watch JoJo, you know what this is about, so let's go ahead and start it up. As far as I know, there's nothing actually in this at W in this. It's just, you know, a fan dating sim, so. As I walk up the slope, I'm trying not to drag my feet. Students wearing the same uniform are walking along the same incline, split into little groups and talking animatedly even though it's so early in the morning. Why the hell are they so happy? This school has one of the worst reputations in the whole city. But I guess it takes a special kind of person to come to a school like this, the kind of person who doesn't care that they're going to a school designed especially for delinquents. And Hamon users. Or maybe I'm just grumpy. Mornings aren't my thing. I kick a rock along with me, going so far, going as far as to veer on my path when I kick it too far out of the way. All these kids be damned, this rock will be my new best friend. It's not that I have the intention of not making friends at this new school, but starting a school year in the middle of the semester wasn't going to be easy. Everyone's already gotten into their little friend groups, have already bonded. Not much room for a new kid. Especially one who isn't even a delinquent. Keep telling yourself that. I kick the rock a little too forcefully and it skitters far ahead of me. I watch it in slow motion as it zooms towards a storm drain. Plop. Well great, now it's Pennywise's rock. I just killed my one and only friend. Oh man. Whew, this plot's already got me by the heart. I can't take this. So this is it, huh? I was expecting busted windows and weeds, maybe a bit of ominous lightning, but it looks like just any other school. The kids, too, sure, there were. There's more than a few crazy hairstyles, and most have taken very generous liberations with the uniform, but they're not that bad. Huh. Crazy hairstyles. I guess Yugi Moto goes here, too. No. I can't get weak. Even if I'm lonely, I can't let my guard down. If I do, the next thing I'll know, I'll be in a gang and committing petty crimes and arson. Gotta stay on my toes. Constant vigilance. Hey there! It is Josuke. I jump and immediately take on a defensive stance that I'd seen in old kung fu movies. The guy laughs and looks me up and down. I don't know much about Josuke. Whoa there, pal. I ain't looking for trouble. He seems nice enough. I ease my fists down. But I guess I was right to assume that you're the new kid, right? Mr. Jonathan told me you'd be coming today. Uh, This guy seems like kind of a... <laughs> Asshole, so let's keep it to it. Let's keep him an asshole. What's it to you? The guy gives me an awkward laugh. Well, I mean, Mr. Jonathan asked me to give you a little tour. Oh, oh yeah. I'm Josuke, by the way. Hey, Josuke. I hear Diamond is unbreakable. What should I call you? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm here at Hiko. No, no, let's, let's, let's go with Quasi. There we go. Well, Quasi, let's get going, shall we? Josuke shows me around. Kids are milling around the hallways and filtering into classrooms, paying us a little mind. Everything actually looks pretty... ordinary. Huh? Nothing, it's just the place might actually be a little nicer than the school I used to go to. Well, you know what they say. Don't judge a book by its... asshole alert. Wait, what? <gasps> there he is! The best boy. But before I have time to ask, a guy bounds up to us and wraps an arm around Josuke's neck like they're the best of buds. But by Josuke's face, I can tell that's most likely not the case. There he is. Oi, Josuke-chan! Josuke sighs through his nose and doesn't bother to hide his annoyance. I told you not to call me that. The guy pinches Josuke's cheek. And I told you to call me senpai, but you don't. This is what people call a stalemate, Josuke-chan. Josuke huffs and shrugs the guy's arm off of him. Shouldn't you be in class? Nah. Josuke scoffs. What do you mean, nah? Class isn't optional. It is when you have bigger fish to fry. I've been quietly watching the exchange this whole time, but now the guy's eyes fall on me. Speaking of fish I'd like to fry. Oh no. <laughs> He's blushing. Oh boy. He holds his hands out to me. I'm Joseph. Joseph Joestar. Did you just call me a fish? Oh no, we're gonna introduce ourselves to Joseph. This is such an honor. 
Wow, his hands are big. I'm Quasi, nice to meet you. Oh ho ho, so polite. Instead of shaking my hand, he grabs it and leans his head down. Wait. Holy shit, is he going to... He brushes a soft kiss to my knuckles before grinning at me. The pleasure is all mine. What the hell is this game? Josuke sighs, obviously used to Joseph's antics. Stop harassing the new kid and just tell us what you want. Joseph straightens up and finally gets to the heart of the matter. Have you seen she's uh, around? The bell rings, signaling that class is starting. The last few stragglers in the hallway disappear into different doors, leaving the three of us alone. Joseph doesn't seem perturbed in the slightest. What a bad boy. He's probably in class, you know, like he's supposed to be, like you're supposed to be. Joseph sticks his tongue out at Josuke playfully. Don't act like you don't class cut class, Josu Chad. Me and the new kid aren't fooled in the slightest. It's clear that Josuke is about to sputter some response, but the Joseph guy gives a hearty laugh and claps him on the back, as he is known to do. I'm sorry, man. I'm only teasing you. You just make it so easy. What Caesar look like? How does one explain the person who is Shiza Zapelli? Uh, probably dead? Like most Zapellis? Josuke rolls his eyes. Let's see, picture me, but about 13% less sexy and a lot more blonde. And Italian. We haven't seen him. Well, damn, that bastard knows we have a date at the fountain this morning. Oh, are you guys finally dating? What do you mean, finally? The stud is flying solo. This stud is flying solo. He winks at me. That is, until the stud finds the right little fishy. I must make a weird face because Joseph breaks into a gale of laughter. I see. When are Mom Wamu and SCDC going to show up? And cars. When he calms down, he points at Josuke. Sees the chan and I have a race. Loser has to buy lunch. But the yellow belly is taking his dear sweet time. At this rate, my racer isn't going to be in peak physical condition. So it's not you two who are racing? Then who? Joseph puts a finger to his lips. It's best not to ask questions. Well, anyways, I'm going to go track down that Italian bastard. See ya. Well, that guy is... Certainly something. Ooh. Josuke laughs. Yeah, that's certainly one way to put it. He's really not that bad a guy, he's just rambunctious. Yeah, that's a good word. He sucks in a deep breath and lets his cheese cheeks puff out before exhaling it. By the way, Josuke, I like your pompadour. So anyways, let's get back to that tour. I somehow knew Josuke, if there was going to be somebody that was a friendly character that gets to know my character early, it was probably going to be Josuke. Either that or Jonathan. Josuke is really talkative, giving me people to watch out for, pointers on how to fit in, and other odds and ends of information. He's quick to laugh and has a certain charm that makes me feel at ease. Well, that's our humble little school. I guess it's time to get to class now. Well, I'm guessing this is the option to possibly flirt with Josuke, but yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, you're right. Oh, there he is. The goodest boy who got cucked by Dio. Also, Rip Doggy. Everyone looks at us when we enter the room, as to be expected. The teacher, Mr. Jonathan, stops writing on the board and gives us both a sunny smile. There you are. I was starting to wonder if you two had gotten lost. He looks to me and smiles even brighter. Wow. If he keeps this up, I'm gonna go blind. Yeah, sounds about right. You must be Quasi. It's great to meet you. It's nice to meet you too, Mr. Jonathan. What a positive attitude. I appreciate that. Did Josuke give you a good tour? I hope he wasn't too troublesome. We only did a handful of petty crimes. Nothing federal, West, rest assured. Jonathan shakes his head and Josuke laughs before heading towards his seat. Would you like to introduce yourself to the class, Quasi? I very much would like to not do it, but I know it's a rhetorical question. I turn to the class. Hey plebs, I'm Quasi. Hi, I'm Quasi. Uh, hi, I'm Quasi. Okay, so far so good. I'm here to crack some skulls and learn some shit. Yeah, I want to learn him on. Possibly get a stand -o. Uh, hmm. 
I feel like here to crack some skulls and learn some shit is something Jotaro would like. Ready to get this year over with is something Josuke might like, and that seems to be a Jonathan answer. Let's get ready to get this year over with. Glare at everyone intimidatingly. <laughs> Uh, I look forward to beating all of you. Wow, the, 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 repli the uh, replies on this are amazing. I bow politely and there's a bit of curious chatter around the room. What a lovely introduction, Quasi. Jonathan claps his hands together. We've got a few seats available. Choose whichever one you want. Uh... I mean, it'd be really stupid just to not sit beside Josuke. He's like the only person we know. I don't hesitate. Josuke is my only lifeline in the school, and I'm going to take every opportunity I'm given to stick by him. As I make my way to the seat, I can see Josuke trying to hide a smile. Is he happy that I chose to sit by him? Well, I mean, it, it, that, that was the pretty obvious answer. I mean, he's the only person we know, so, like, why would we not sit by him? Maybe with the acceptance of the teacher... Oh, wait. History. Class here is pretty much the same, too. Maybe with the exception of the teacher, who I'm pretty sure used to be a bodybuilder. Hmm. No. Or a model. Or both. He was, uh, what was it? A, was he a football or a baseball player? Or like rugby or something. He played some kind of sport. Even if he's big and pretty, he's still got that teacher charm that makes me zone out and daydream. I wonder what's going to be served for lunch. Maybe some Joseph. Something slides across my desk, pulling me from my near dozing. I look over and Josuke is tapping a pin against his lips innocently, looking all too suspicious with the way he suddenly absorbed the lesson. Bitch, just about five minutes ago you were falling asleep. I can see through your ruse, Josuke. I read it over a few times before picking up my pin. Meet me after class if you want an ass kicking. By ass kicking, I mean if you want to hang out. I see. Uh, was that from Josuke, I guess? But I want to hang out with somebody else. I don't want an ass kicking. I appreciate the fact that he's trying to make me feel not so out of place, but I'm not in the mood to hang out. The first day of school is always draining, and I have every intention of going straight home and taking a much-deserved nap. I scribble down my answer. Sorry, I've already got plans. Brownie face. I don't look over to see how he reacts to my answer. When the class ends, Josuke is the first to grab his bag and leave. I shrugged to myself and grabbed my own bag. Quasi, would you mind staying back for a minute or two? Why are you blushing, sir? Again, another request that I have to fulfill even if I don't want to. Teachers have too much power. Sure. I hang back as the class filters out. When the last student leaves, I'm completely alone with Mr. Jonathan. I can't help but notice how frickin' big he is. <laughs> he would break me like a damn toothpick if- He could break me like a damn toothpick if he wanted to. But when he smiles like that, I can't imagine him hurting a fly. How was your first day? Is this really what he wanted to talk to me about? Huh, that's kind of sweet, actually. I think I can get used to it. Oh, before I forget. He goes to his desk and grabs a neatly stacked, stapled packet of papers. You live close to one of your fellow classmates. He holds the papers out to me. You didn't come to class today, so I thought you could drop these off on your way home. It'll be a great way for you to meet the last of our little class. I take the packet from him and look over the first page. It was the stuff we went over in class today. Sure, that shouldn't be a problem. Jonathan smiles at me. Thank you, Quasi. He leans forward a bit. And thank you for joining our class. I know things are a little bit different at Gyuniku Academy, and I know you're going to do great. I'm guessing we're going to go meet Jotaro now. I leave quickly, a light blush creeping on up to my cheeks. <laughs> Alright, calm down. He gave you some homework to take home. It's not like he made out with you. With the packet of homework Mr. Jonathan gave me, I follow the directions to this Jotaro's house. He lives on the same street as me, so this shouldn't take too long. Yep. As I look for the house number scribbled on the post-it note, my gut clenches in anxiety. What I've heard about Jotaro comes to mind, and I gulp. He can't be that bad. I mean, I'm sure what I was told is just an exaggeration or something. Sure, he seems to have a reputation at a school made for delinquent punks, but... How bad can it be? I mean, I go to that school, and it's not like I deserve... Oh. I found it. It's only a handful of houses away from mine. I double-check the house number to make sure it's correct before stepping up to the door, letting out a deep breath. I press the doorbell. 
Oh, you're just going to come to me? You're just going to come right to me? I can't hear any footsteps from the inside, or at least a voice reassuring me. Someone is on their way to answer. I ring the doorbell again. It's still quiet. Maybe nobody is home? I lean back and check the driveway. But as I do, the door clicks as if being unlocked. I stand up straight to greet who answered and find myself safe to face to face, to face with the broodiest mug I've ever seen. Uh. My words fail me. Is this Jedro? The tall, this tall, beefy mofo that's staring at me as if I'm hoping I evaporate where I stand. I open my mouth to speak, but I don't know where to begin. Hey, a handsome, feeling lonely in this big ol' house. What's up, man? I also go to that whack-ass school. The one you don't even go to, my dude. Jedro stared at me, his face barely giving away what he was thinking. He thinks I'm weird as hell, doesn't he? Listen, our teacher, Jonathan? Yeah, he wanted me to give you this. I hold up the homework packet. I don't live far from here, so it's not like the this is that much of a chore. I shrug my shoulders as if to convince him. Thanks. Dredro just takes the packet and nods. That was really all I needed to do. I guess I can just excuse myself and go home, but... You are Jotaro, right? He looks back at me as if to confirm. Really is nice to meet you, Jotaro. I'll see you. He shuts the door in my face without a word. Around. I scoff under my breath. Asshole. That only means my little task is done. I turn around to leave the property and head straight to my house to conclude the day. Ari Ari does it. Uh, where the hell's the snooze button? There it is. Hmm. All right, all right, I'm up. <laughs> he pressed snooze and slept for a little bit longer. I sit up tiredly and look at my clock. The little glowing numbers tell me it's still pretty early. I had set it early with the intention of getting to school before everyone else and maybe talking with Mr. Jonathan a bit more. Now that it's actually time to put effort into the idea, I'm not so sure. That snooze button is looking like a damn temptress. Um, do we want to go see Jonathan? Nah, let's snooze. I gave in to my sleepy desires. Boy, that is... I feel that. I feel that a lot. And smack the snooze button. Ah, my bed's so toasty. The morning started as per usual. I mean, really, who, who gets up early to go to school and talk to the teacher, man? I got dressed, ate breakfast, and was out the door with time to spare. Time for my second day at Gyuniku Academy. I considered picking up the pace to avoid the inevitable crowd at the school gates, but then I found myself standing in front of Jotaro's house. My eyes go from the front door to the curtained windows and out toward the street leading to the school. I look in, I took in a contemplative breath while thinking back to our interaction the day before. He definitely thinks I'm weird. I can make up for it and invite him to walk to school, but would he even go? I was told he frequently ditches. What if he's not even home? I shift on my feet, urging myself to make a decision. Eh, why should I care? It doesn't really matter, does it? It's not like I owe him anything. There's no dang reason why I need to try so hard around him. Turn away from the house and continue my walk to school by myself. It didn't even take more than ten steps when I heard the banging of a door closing behind me and the voice of a younger kid calling out to someone. I think it's probably pretty obvious by this point who I'm going for, considering I turn everyone else down. You're gonna get in trouble if you skip too many days, stupid. Make sure you go... Make sure you go sometime this week. The chillin'. Yeah, it is! I turn around, curiosity getting the better of me, and see some girl wearing the local middle school's uniform leaving Jodoro's house. Hey, Jolin. Her hair styled into twin buns with her bangs dyed pink. They have a middle school for delinquents, too? The expression on her face reminds me of Jotaro's, an edgy broodiness, but with a girlish twist. A sister? Or daughter? The latter wasn't entirely impossible. I mean, isn't this guy in... Yeah. I mean, but, but would she be that old, though? <laughs> like, if he's in high school and this is his daughter, that would make no sense. But it doesn't seem like our character's questioning it. I keep walking to avoid coming across as suspicious as she passes me in no time. As unlikely as it seems, I wonder if I'll learn the whole story behind this girl in Jotaro. Probably not. The next morning, I start my walk to school. Sure, it's been taking some adjusting to this place, but I can say that I like it. I muse over the past few days when I reach Jotaro's house. My steps start to falter when someone comes out the front door. It's the same middle schooler I saw last time. 
Her twin buns wrapped tight on her head, and below those dyed bangs, a scowl, reminiscent of Jotaro's. Yeah, we can say hey to Jolin. Good morning. I call out to her, and she stops to look at me. Her eyes are as piercing as Jotaro's, and it rips a nervous smile out of me. Hey. Huh, I wonder if Giorno's in here, too. She continues walking. I'm losing her. Um, I quicken my pace to walk beside her. Are you, well, a relative of Jotaro's? Quick and straight to the point. What could go wrong? She glances at me almost accusingly. You're not even going to ask her my name first, and you're just dishing out all these questions about my personal life? Well, damn. I look back at her with a non-existent comeback stuck in my throat. Relax. She's just a kid. Gotta set an example for the future generation. My bad, you're right. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm Quasi. And you are? Jolin. I catch the satisfied smirk she tries to hide. It's nice to meet you, Jolin. She shrugs and keeps her eyes on the sidewalk we share. I guess. We both fall quiet, just the sound of our shoes against pavement filling the chilly mountain air. Morning air. <laughs> mountain air. Yeah, no, we're not in the mountains. This certainly wasn't how I planned my morning to go. If anything, I expected to be walking alone and anticipating the wild shit that will inevitably go down once I arrive at Gyuniku. Wasn't there something you wanted to ask me? Oh yeah. I look at Jolin with somewhat of a smile. Gotta set that example. Right, I just wanted to know if you were a relative of Jotaro's. I noticed you came out of his house. I'm his sister. Oh. Oh. He has a sister? Talk about unexpected. <laughs> it's not like that never happens to anyone. Right, right, it's just weird. I mean, considering Jotaro. You're weird. That's fair. Yeah, no, that absolutely is fair. Sure, you shouldn't generalize, but damn. We are weird. Kids these days. I probably shouldn't even be talking. I don't really know him. Heh. <laughs> so you're not one of his friends? Nah, does he even have any friends? Chillin' is quiet for a moment. You know... I'm not really sure. You're his own sister and you don't know if he has friends? I shake my head and tisk my tongue. The girl huffed defensively. It's not like I know everything about him, he always keeps to himself. What do you know then? He has this hat. A hat? He's always wearing it, wouldn't be surprised if he was born with the ugly thing fused into his skull. Now that I think about it, he's wearing a hat the times I saw him. That's... weird. I only nod in response. As we round the corner, we reach the intersection that branches out our path. Jolin was doomed to turn, due to turn left to reach the middle school while I need to turn right. Guess I'll see you around, weirdo. I force a smile and wave her off, then continue my walk to the academy. Alright. Well, I think I may do a second video of this, potentially. But uh, this has been interesting to say the least so far. Hopefully we can get to an ending with Jonathan, uh, Joseph, not Jonathan, no, nope. cat is trying to jump up onto my chair. Hopefully we can get to an ending with uh, Joseph, but uh, I'll see you next time and we'll see if we can get that ending.